Hello and welcome back to another Reality Check VR video. As you saw by the intro, today we're going to be taking a look at Gaussian splatting. Gaussian, 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 Gaussian. This is one of those really cool methods or new technologies that I find fascinating, and for the last several weeks I've been playing around with it and trying to understand the best way that I can use this tool for my own purposes. Because I do have an older 1000 series GPU, I wasn't able to do things the exact same way I've seen in other tutorials, and because of that I wanted to make a video myself to show people kind of my method of doing things and to hopefully help some people out there and interest anybody else who hasn't seen this technology yet. For those of you who have been paying attention to Gaussian splatting, you're not going to want to miss this, and for those of you who do not know what it is exactly, let's take a look. I believe that Gaussian splatting or methods like it are going to be the future of entertainment capture. And what I mean by that is no more drones flying around, no more cable pulley systems going around the NFL stadiums. Instead, we're going to have high definition cameras everywhere, LiDAR sensors, and combined with this kind of technology, we're going to be able to have 3D spectator cams, just like the video games, flying around all kinds of public places. Imagine being on your phone and being able to take a camera and virtually go anywhere you want on the field and see things up close. If you're lost prevention in a store, imagine being able to see any angle of people and customers that are buying products in your store as well. These types of things are going to be happening very, very soon, and we need to be ready for it. For those of you who still don't quite understand exactly what Gaussian splatting is, let's go ahead and get a technical breakdown. Gaussian splatting is a novel method for real-time radiance field rendering that represents a 3D scene using millions of particles or blobs in 3D space. It is a class of radiance field methods, like neural radiance fields or NERFs, and is used for what they call novel view synthesis, or scenes captured with a set of photos or videos. You can even use some old media that wasn't for this purpose, as I'm going to be showing you in this video. The technique uses sparse point clouds and 3D Gaussians to achieve the high quality real-time novel view synthesis, optimizing the representation of the scene through an interleaved optimization and density control process. And we don't know exactly how that works even. Just like many things in AI, it's creepy cool, it works, then it's somewhat mysterious. The main differences between Gaussian splatting and 3D nerfs are speed. Gaussian splatting is faster to train and render compared to nerfs, making it more suitable for real-time applications. Reconstruction quality. Gaussian splatting offers better reconstruction and less blurring compared to nerfs, resulting in higher quality novel views. Representation. While nerfs use a fully connected neural network to generate novel views of complex 3D scenes based on a partial set of 2D images, Gaussian splatting represents the scenes using millions of particles or blobs in 3D space. In a nutshell, Gaussian splatting offers faster training and rendering, better reconstruction quality, and less blurring compared to 3D nerfs, making it a superior choice for real-time radiance field rendering applications. So here we have the SIGGRAPH 2023 linked paper, and this shows you all kinds of wonderful inputs, some different uh, use cases that they have here, as well as it has a great YouTube video that I've shown already in this one. It also has a nice visual comparison spot where you can see kind of the differences between their uh, version of Gaussian splats versus other rendering techniques that were in the past. Before I go any further, uh, I want to go ahead and make sure I give a shout out to the Nerf guru right here, Jonathan Stevens, really cool creator who has been making some videos showing how to use these tools. I, I certainly have been using his videos as inspiration and as a knowledge base. There is the Gaussian splatting that's available on GitHub and he has created his own branch. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to be putting all the links in my description as well. And I definitely want to go over to his channel, give him a subscribe and a follow if you can. Definitely support other people out there that are trying to help us get this technology understood and digested so that we can use it for our own purposes. Also, there's a bunch of uh, other information out there on Reshot and, of course, on YCombinator.com. Going back to the original paper here, we have lots of great information that we can look at. I'm going to zoom in if I can here. Uh, the one thing I want to pay attention to is that when we're doing our trainings or when we're trying to recreate a 3D world, we want to have the highest PSNR. And that PSNR, as you can see over here, Instant NGP, which is what I was using before, 22.1, versus the new Gaussian splatting, 25.2. And what that PSNR is just a pixel signal to noise ratio. And the higher it is, the more accurate it's going to be at recreating your environment and, and making your objects look the way they did in real life. Also linked is some of these really cool data sets that you can download for yourself to take a look at. So if you don't have your own photos, if you don't have your own videos, you're able to just download these, put it all into the system and take a look at the 3D worlds for yourself. There are also real-time goals and viewers on the browser that you can go to. This one is on Hugging Face and there are a few other ones that I found online. This one is one that has the uh, scene already set into it. 
Some of the other ones allow you to drag and drop your own scenes into it so you can look at them for yourself. And one random little thing is, uh, I, I can't wait. Right now, this is an old nerf to nerf technology, but very soon with Gaussian splatting, I mean, look at this. You're going to be able to use AI learning and, 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 and ChatGPT -like, like technology to actually be able to change things on the fly in a whim. Okay, okay, we're gonna get away from this. Get away from this, off, off topic, off topic. Okay, so here we are in Nerf Studio with one of the Gaussian splats that I created, and keep in mind, these weren't necessarily shot with all of the detail, all the fidelity that you should be doing when you're trying to create a very high quality Gaussian splat. You're gonna wanna actually walk around the entire area and capture it. For these videos, I did very quick, less than a minute videos where I ran around the subject and, and tried to just see the differences and how that would create, whether it be nerfs or Gaussian splats. And, and let's take a look at some of the results with, with what I've got. And for each of these examples I'm going to show you, we've got an original video that I took and I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of that original video footage so you have an idea of what it looked like when I took it with the video camera and then what the results are going to look like here on the computer afterward. As I fly around the scene here, I can use WSAD and I can use my uh, arrow keys to kind of go around the subject. And you can see when I start to get to different angles, there's different places where the interpolation doesn't quite get uh, the subject as good. And, and that's certainly because I just don't have those things in the actual uh, video or in, in the actual memory for it to see. Also the racket moves a little bit and that's because clearly the subject uh, moved the racket just a little bit in space and time. So as we're just moving around we're seeing kind of where it was in different places and you can see also in the background where we didn't get the information it's going to be turning black. When I was walking around in real life with the camera I was actually getting these scenes right here and because of it you're able to see things much more realistic and clear. The fact that when you combine this with AI or things like Deforum and Stable Diffusion, you can create some really, really cool effects uh, and things that, that look very, very interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the next one and let's take a look at the sign. If you just walk by left to right, you're able to recreate and get scenes that look Pretty incredible. Obviously in the video, it looked a little bit sharper because I actually did use a sharpener to make that scene try to uh, be enhanced a little bit. And right here, you'll notice I have like a lot of sky particles that are in the way. This is because I believe I only got it from one angle. Had I actually recorded it and kind of walked uh, to the sides and gotten some side angles, then I think I would have been able to prevent that from happening. But what it is able to do is recreate some with high fidelity, the actual textures uh, and, and in some situations, if you're at the right angle, it looks pretty cool. So I took this one very quickly from old footage and I was able to get some video of my son out here <laughs> smiling, doing a cool little pose with this, uh, this peace sign up. And yeah, uh, so doing something like this, you're able to fly around. Oh boy, it's kind of make me, gonna make me sick reset the up direction. I just wanted to show you that I can actually fly around the scenes and go 360 around him, which is pretty cool. And when you're able to do stuff like that, yeah, flying all the way around. Super sweet. By far the coolest reason that I like to play with Gaussian splats is because of nostalgia. The fact that I can capture a moment in space and time like this and be able to come back to it and see it uh, is, is certainly exciting and, and something's very special about that. So uh, let's go ahead and keep moving on to the next ones. I wanna show you guys as many of these as I can and that's something I really just wanna captivate in this video is just how cool this technology is and how useful it can be for creating memories uh, that are pretty easy to do. Okay, so here's a scene I took very, very quickly uh, a long time ago when I was trying to do some nerfs with instant NGP. So it actually turned out okay, at least when you're doing some certain angles, uh, other angles don't work as well. The fidelity of the area around it is just not there at all. Granted, I was using a cell phone. Yeah, I mean, the fact that I can fly around the subject, Jillian is there just being a nice model for me, actually fly around, see all the angles. If I want, I can go down, right? All right, that's about what that looks like right there. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. This one's pretty trippy. Watching the room that I'm in right now. 
Um, so this is just a, a very simple test I did with my cell phone. I pulled it out and I recorded just a, actually a portrait view of this little couch and ran around it real fast. You can see it starts to break when we get over here. I didn't think, I don't think, yeah, I didn't even, didn't even go all the way around it. So I can make a whole tutorial on the process of installing the software, on how I use my images and how I create them and get them ready for processing and whatnot. But uh, just a very simple thing is if you have really sharp, clear images in the first place, you're going to have really good looking uh, models or good looking 3D Gaussian splats. <laughs> Okay, so for the next three, we used a 360 video camera, and it's a little bit different process than the other ones I've shown you so far, but the big takeaway I found here is that these 360 videos were not taken to create nerfs or 3D Gaussian splats. These 360 videos were just taken like normal. I'm behind the camera or below the camera at all times. At no point was I purposefully trying to stay out of the shot, and in many times, I'm in the shot. So this is what you're able to create even though uh, you're, you know, I was in the shot or, or here most of the time, I'm still able to fly around and see a pretty big world. Oh, whoa, whoa, can't go too far there. Uh, and actually see with high fidelity, a lot of the different features that were there at the time, which I find to be quite fascinating. So uh, I started the, the video over here in real life. Let's me scooch down here. When I was riding my, my little skateboard, taking my 360 video. And even though there's a lot of, uh, of, of artifacts, there's a lot of haze everywhere, for the most part, you're still able to identify not only the area that you're in, but 3D fly around different trees and, and just really get a sense of scale of what this area is like to be in. And, and I found this to be fascinating. And, and the main reason I find this to be fascinating is simply because, as I said at the beginning, is I did not create this 360 video or record this 360 video with the intention of turning this into a Gaussian splat, which means if you have old 360 videos or if you have places and, and things that you've done in the past, you're able to take that footage and recreate those areas like this. So I've got two more scenes with 360 cameras that I've tested out and a whole bunch more that I want to test out in the future. So uh, stay tuned, subscribe, future videos. We're going to be showing off those things. Uh, but right now, I'm just so happy to see that this is working and I'm able to actually fly around a 360 scene. Oh my God, this one's crazy looking. Okay, uh, can I find out where I was supposed to be? Yeah, this one is just crazy. This one was not as successful. <laughs> With this last video, we start inside and we go out, but that's actually not where we start the video. We start the video about here when the camera's taken off from the area and you can look down and hey, look, there's me. So here's the shot that was trained right here. It's just the drone going up, kind of looking at the top over there with the big sun and the ocean meet. And uh, that's pretty much all I shot here. I was trying to do this as best I could, but uh, it kept failing because I had too many points of initialization. So I had to make sure that I only had about 450 photos. And with that, I was able to recreate uh, this kind of a scene. And it's pretty cool. It doesn't look exactly the way, obviously it does in real life, but the fact is we were able to recreate the essence of the area and still get these 3D uh, images of the buildings around and be able to see them at different angles. Uh, I know that if I'm combining this with AI or if I'm doing some kind of a thing with Deforum and Stable Diffusion, that this would be absolutely essential and doing some really, really cool shots. So again, for content, this is amazing. For nostalgia, this is amazing. Uh, and keep in mind, this drone shot was taken about a, a little over a year ago. So it wasn't created for this process or for this purpose. It's just something that I already had lying around and I was able to then recreate the area somewhat. Uh, and the idea here, again, is that you have, if you have old footage or old drone shots, old 360 shots, uh, anything like that, you're able to then put it in the software and see what you can get from it, which is just so much fun. I'm just making sure my exposure works. All right, here we are back to tennis. And again, we have some really, really uh, cool shots here. I, I, I wanted to show just kind of the idea of, of sports just because of the simple fact that, uh, well, 
doesn't look very good from this angle. With sports, we're able to, in the very soon future, have real-time entertainment capture. So imagine the players moving and running around, and, and, and we'll be able to take a camera just like this, a spectator cam, as we had in video games, and fly around the scenes to see them in any angle that we want to. Uh, certainly, there's many, many benefits to that uh, for, for things that we can't even understand yet. So uh, this is going to be something that I'm going to be continuing to play around with, and, and as time goes on, we're going to see so many advancements come through. Uh, let's go ahead and finish with my tennis pose. I've got a tennis pose. Whoa, whoa. All right, so here's the last one we're going to take a look at tonight uh, or today. And this is the, the Gaussian splat of myself trying to do a cool little little pose here. Again, this is just a quick camera run around the subject, very, very quick and, and, and dirty. And as you can see, it doesn't always get things perfectly. Uh, this one is, is, is working though. You can see it, it's got some fidelity in certain spots. There's certainly a lot of room for improvement, uh, but the mere fact that we can, you know, walk up, I can see what's in my pocket. I can see what's in my pocket and how the shadow changes. It's quite amazing uh, to be able to see just if I'm creating like an intro of some sort, for example, uh, what I can do is I can have video of me playing, video of me doing something, and all of a sudden we've got just this quick shot of me kind of being still like, you know, doing something like that while we combine it with some effects. It's going to look really, really cool uh, and get people to actually stop and take a look for a moment. And as a marketer, you always want people to stop for a few seconds and take a look. And that's what this technology allows you to do. It also allows us to have a more of a intimate connection with uh, content media. People at all those Taylor Swift concerts getting stuck in the boonies, they're able to at least jump on their phones and fly around in spectator cameras. Uh, maybe that would be kind of fun for them to be able to do in real time. And, and then think about it, they could even go look at themselves and say hi. <laughs> Make little videos of yourselves at these live events. It would be a very fun and interesting and safe way to do it. I mean, think about it. At the end of the day, we want to be able to be safe and have fun. We don't have enough police for everybody. We don't have enough drones for everybody, but we could all have our own little virtual camera and, and do the recordings, create videos in the way that we would like to. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video right now. It has been a pleasure and an honor to have this opportunity to uh, you know show you guys these really cool things. I'm so excited to see how this advances in the future. This is one of those technologies that just gets me, you know, this is just one of those things that gets me feeling all excited because uh, I, I see the possibilities for it are endless. Uh, even though there are some scary applications for it in the near future, uh, I, I, I tend to try to focus on the good things. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And until then, be good to each other and have a wonderful day. Bye. We're going to be taking a look at Gaussian Splat. Ga Gaussian Splat, Gaussian Goy. You can, I, you can say this, I'm going to say Gaussian splats. All right.